Hey everybody, it's Phil Ralston from 10 o'clock service on Sunday. I am at the district with their iconic clock tower. They are setting up for the holidays, man. Check out this Christmas tree. Isn't that awesome? And uh, lots of folks out here enjoying the uh, scenery. And they're setting up the uh, <coughs> Santa Shack. I'm not sure when it opens, but I'm sure it's on their website. So get out and see the world, man. Hope you enjoy service with Pastor Diane. We'll see you. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us in this way today. So turn up the volume and let's get started. Into the heavens afar Sun, moon, planets and the shining stars God Almighty has created them all Created them all Both big and small To praise the name of the Lord We will praise the name of the Lord We will praise the name of the Lord Young and old, meek and bold, earth and sky, raising high, praise the name of the Lord. We will praise the name of the Lord. We will praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. singing the song plants and animals will join along fish and creeping things and all flying birds and all flying birds will sing the words of praise the name of the Lord we will praise the name of the Lord we will praise the name of the Lord Young and old, meek and bold, earth and sky, raising high, praise the name of the Lord. We will praise the name of the Lord. We will praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Dear Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your Spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. 
God hears your prayer and fills you with the power to live today, tomorrow, and every day, enjoying new and abundant life. Live in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Take my life that I may be consecrated or to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless grace. Take my hands and let them move at the And let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee Take my silver and my gold Not of my twelve grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to uh, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, because I'm pretty sure by the time you see this, it will be uh, before Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving will be very close. So hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I also want to mention that we are in the time of year where we adopt children and seniors through Lutheran Social Services of Nevada. And if that's something you might be interested in, you can contact the church office and you will be able to find out if there is a child or a senior who uh, you could be able to get, give them some Christmas gifts. And the gifts will be suggested specifically they do for have those some, people. Yes, right. We read from the prophet Zephaniah, the first chapter. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared his sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who settle like dregs in wine, those who stay in their hearts. The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. Well, it's hard to think about good news and okay. celebration and joy mm. and worship when you read coming. <laughs> from a prophet, Zephaniah. These must have been bad times. Mm. The, the people was, were in bad shape and yeah. God's telling them to straighten up. Mm -hmm. Well, these, you know, we are hearing from the prophets. Uh, and it's last week the reading was from Amos and Amos was talking to the people of the northern kingdom, uh, the portion called Israel. Well, by the time of Zephaniah, Israel has fallen. Israel is no longer an independent, have their own king. They're, they've been taken over by a foreign power. And now this is Judah, the southern kingdom. And that's who Zephaniah is talking to, to those people and to their leaders. There was a time where there was a good king. And, and the assumption is that what Zephaniah was speaking was before the good king came. There was a good king, King Josiah brought about some reforms, the kind of things that Zephaniah was criticizing, things like the priests were even allowing worship of other gods the, in the city of Jerusalem, the wealthy were ignoring the needs of the poor, and so what was supposed to be God's holy city was not living up to that to that identity, to that calling. And so that's why now the prophet is uh, sounding the alarm. I think that's, that's sometimes the way I think of the prophets. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of intense speech, but it's also, you wanna get their attention, you know? So there's gonna be some, some language and some imagery that is shocking and uh, well, this, scary this whole yeah. concept of the day of the lord uh we're confused about it this mm -hmm. is an old testament uh concept mm -hmm. because we have this phrase the lord's day mm -hmm. oh what yeah. day is the lord's day it's <laughs> yeah. sunday it's when we all gather mm -hmm. together and celebrate is, and that's yeah. kind of what we're thinking mm -hmm. but this is a whole different concept the day of the lord mm -hmm. in the old testament and it is generally warning judgment yeah warning the people mm -hmm. that you've been living wrong you've mm -hmm. been you have not been following the covenant that god made with you right and 
this day of the Lord is a day of reckoning mm -hmm. and a day of judgment. Mm -hmm. And so when the prophets are saying this, uh, they're not saying uh, these things to punish people, but to warn yeah. them mm -hmm. that these will be the consequences of your continued rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. And that the point was always, all of the prophets, whenever there's these kind of uh, messages of potential judgment and this kind of warning, it was so that the people could turn from their errors, turn around and worship the true God and learn again to look out for their neighbor. So it wasn't as if this was an absolute. However, in history, what, what did tend to actually happen was that the people didn't hear the warning and so they did continue on that wrong path. But what I also like to hear, it's not part of the reading, but just to know that part of Zephaniah is also giving the other side of the picture, what comes after the day of the Lord and the, uh, some of the imagery there is that God is like the king. God is the one who takes care of the people. And also now there is no longer any oppression. And so we do get some of that, that vision of the reign and the way it is when God is in command. And of course, this is just a short section and it sounds like it's all doom. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's all bad news. But there is, um, the Lord does come mm -hmm. and makes things right. But we're right. not reading that section from the prophet right now. But that's all part of the bigger picture mm -hmm. uh, in our worship and our entire church year yeah. of reading scriptures. Mm -hmm. Our psalm is from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set you have set before you and our secret sins and the light of your countenance. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So we're kind of again still in that phase of the church year coming at the end of the readings from the Gospel of Matthew and hearing some of the readings that also talk about that day of the Lord or kind of that end times or, you know, kind of facing judgment is an element within it. But again, that warning is always and only there so that we can be restored in our relationship with God. And I think the Psalm gives us like another little angle on this in the sense of how brief our life on this earth, we might, we might speak about the return of the Lord when Christ comes again one day, but each and every individual, at some point, my life ends. And in a sense, that's, that's, that's the day of the Lord in sense of meeting, meeting Christ. But uh, that's not something that brings fear or worry, but it's just, it's just a reminder to, to cherish this, this life it can go by so, so quickly, even if it's not. It go, from God's perspective, we are always present with God, but uh, for us it goes quickly. So teach us to number our days. Well, we, we don't generally do that. Mm. We number our years mm. and we celebrate birthday and anniversary now, when you, um, when you ask a child how old they are, they might say, I'm five and a half. Mm -hmm. Because for their short life so far, a half a year, that's a big thing. So right. there's a difference to, to a child mm -hmm. from being five years old or being five and a half. Mm -hmm. 
no longer five, now I'm a little bit older. And then we kind of think, well, you have to grow out of that. And <laughs> after a while, you, you stop doing that half birthday thing until our government makes us do it because my full retirement age for Social Security was 66 and a half. Mm -hmm. And so when I reached that half, I started getting the Social Security income. But that's a, a weak way of numbering our days. Mm -hmm. That's still counting our years. Mm -hmm. But just that concept that if you were to number every day of your life, when you wake up, you say, this is day, I need my phone so I can calculate out 66 and a half times 300. <laughs> uh, yeah. To find out how many days you've been mm -hmm. alive to remind mm -hmm. you that this day counts. We let too many days just mm -hmm. slip mm -hmm. away. And the way this psalmist makes it important is teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. We read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. So this is, again, um, from one of the earliest books of the New Testament, the writings of Paul, where he is talking to a community that he helped establish, a, a an early Christian community. There's probably been some communication back and forth, and uh, I think you noted also earlier last time that there were things that were said in another letter which we don't hear, but we kind of can guess at from based on what Paul's reply is. And that is, again, this expectation that Christ is coming soon. This was what was understood in the early church, that Christ would return and that that would happen within their own lifespan. It could happen at any time, though. That's that, that reminder, that's like a thief in the night. It's, it's an unknown. It's, it's going to be unexpected in its way. We can't, we can't determine exactly when. So I kind of feel that here, what Paul is trying to help the community and the Christians, and it's good message to us too. Well, how do we live in the between time while we're expecting Christ to come again? And we do always say that, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Uh, but what do we do in the meantime? And this is the kind of encouragement and direction and guidance that, uh, that Paul wants to offer. Now, the final verse of this section is, is along the lines of the uh, final verse of the psalm that we read, mm -hmm. uh, teach us to number our days. Mm -hmm. This one is, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. So that's something to remind us that mm -hmm. we can ask ourselves, how many people have I encouraged this week? Mm -hmm. Have I encouraged <laughs> anybody this week? 
that this is just a reminder that this is how we are to live in community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Christian community, knowing that every day is precious, that we spend our days encouraging each other. And I like also that reminder about um, living, living in the day that we are we are living, that it's gonna take some time. I think this is, even though there was this expectation, I think there's a hint of an awareness that this could take a while. So put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Um, putting on, it represents being prepared for something that's gonna take time. This isn't just something for a moment. That breastplate, it's a sense of an armor, but it's, it's something that protects you. And so what helps us be protected in the meantime, also I think it fits in very much with that encouragement, that faith and love and hope, that these are also the things that help sustain us. And they are the very sort of things that we can lift up and encourage for one another. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 25 in verse 14 through 30. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That goes along with the theme of, of uh, the warnings mm -hmm. and, and so... Um, when I was when I was a kid and I heard this story, I had this this uh, picture in my mind that um, five talents is okay. Here's five coins and mm -hmm. three. Here's three, and then here's one. And I was kind of on the side of the one who only received the one mm. talent because I was thinking, well, gee, what can you do with just one little coin? There's not enough to do anything with it. Uh, and then, of course, 
later on in life learning what a talent actually represents mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, what would you call it a, a year's wage a lot that's it's, that's yeah. kind of what a talent is mm -hmm. what you would earn an entire year mm -hmm. that's what it was so even the one who received one that was is a lot take your entire mm -hmm. annual earnings mm -hmm. and invest it right now the ones who received more they earned an astounding yeah, actually, 100 that, percent return that's amazing yeah. which is you know kind of setting up this real high expectation mm -hmm. but that is not the case yeah um even just a simple interest you know just this story mm -hmm. you should have done something with this that's yeah. the whole that's the whole idea the god whole gives to you yeah. you use it mm -hmm. uh, and the first two um, they went out and they to the best of their mm -hmm. ability apparently uh, did with what god gave them what the master gave them mm -hmm. and this last one um, decided well i don't i fear you i don't like you i'm mm -hmm. i'm just gonna do nothing and give it back to you at the end mm -hmm. And the, just that attitude of uh, scarcity, of, mm -hmm. of um, nothingness, yeah. of almost a vindictive behavior towards this master. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, you gave me all of this to invest, so what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to do mm -hmm. anything. So we get this real difference in the, the attitudes and behaviors mm -hmm. of the ones who are receiving the talents. And the way this story, this parable is told it's told with um, repeating phrases. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of get the idea of what's going to happen next. And it's, you know, you receive much, you are blessed. Mm -hmm. You receive a little bit, you are blessed. You mm -hmm. receive even less, you, you are... will be blessed. Yeah. But the response of mm -hmm. that last servant mm -hmm. was evil. And it's, it's, I think, you know, there's, there's a, truly a lot of different ways you know what do we think the talents might represent and I mean there's there's a lot that we could consider what that might represent but I also I think too no matter what we think that might represent whether it's a financial gain or maybe it's sharing a faith maybe it's sharing an abundance of God's forgiveness and multiplying God's forgiveness I mean there's there's all kinds of ways we might decide what that could could represent but I think also what I'm starting to grow to see about this parable that Jesus talks about is that the first two they want to carry on the work of their master and if we now some people will say we're not supposed to see the master as God or Jesus but I will say well just for a moment let's let's just say it's let's just say it is Jesus in the sense that what were the things that Jesus did you know especially as we see the kind of ministry that Jesus carried out throughout the gospel of Matthew the the kind of teaching the kind of healing the kind of lifting up those who were had been brought down and who were hungry he fed those who were hungry you know so if we are active in carrying out the ministry that Jesus carried out in his life on earth if we are continuing doing what Jesus did that's going to bring a blessing that's we're going to find that that is God's going to make that go farther. God is going to bring good with that. But if but if we carry a sense of fear of God, so that we hold back and we act, we live out of fear, rather than out of the love that God shows towards us, then that is when we get off track. Yet there there are no details given about what each of these servants did mm -hmm. but we see in this whole picture that the first two were faithful mm -hmm. like you said they continued to do the work of the master and and they they prospered in that and the last one you know even today if we were to say if you took your annual salary mm -hmm. and just hid it in the ground after one year it would not be worth the mm -hmm. same amount it was mm -hmm. The year previous yeah. so you say in essence you lost you money lost on that mm -hmm. and so that is showing that this third servant 
was not being faithful in continuing mm -hmm. the master's work, but actually stopped mm -hmm. the master's work and even regressed some, mm -hmm. we would say, because of inflationary kind of things <laughs> and the value of money changes over time. Yeah. So, you know, we, we are not told to double everything. Mm -hmm. We are told to be faithful. Yeah. Welcoming God's reign of righteousness and mercy, we pray for the church all in need and God's good creation. We pray for the church that it continues to sow seeds of mercy, love, forgiveness, and joy, even as it anticipates your coming again to bring restoration to the new heaven and earth. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. We lift up all nations, their leaders and governments, that they may replace power, pride, greed and enmity with justice, mercy, reconciliation, and peacemaking. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. We lift up the lonely, the disheartened, those who suffer from debilitating illness, those who cannot speak for themselves, those in any need. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. We lift up the ministers of our congregation that they continue to encourage and send us out in peace and to follow your call. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Receive our prayers and hopes, Good Shepherd, and bring us safely into all joy and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So much to do and I can't let go Of my worries about tomorrow Each day has problems of its own Some are real and some unknown All these thoughts can lead to fear Even so I ask you here Take my life and renew Wash me through and through, then in all that I do, I will sing out to you all my days, lifting high joyful praise, glorifying you. You are strong In all the challenges I must face With your power I will embrace Everything that comes my way You will give me strength to say Take my life and renew Wash me through and through then in all that I do, I will sing out to you all my days, lifting high joyful praise, glorifying you, glorifying you. Learning from you how to live With the grace you freely give Blessings abound and overflow I am so thankful that I know One whose great love will allow Boldness to offer you now Take my life and renew Wash me through and through, then in all that I do, I will sing out to you all my days, lifting high joyful praise, glorifying you.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And stay in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. You'll see us here again next week. <laughs>